Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast, go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Good morning. Hi. Good afternoon. Good evening. <clears throat> How are you? I just realized I didn't thread my machine yet. I was just like lounging around here. You know, you know me. Um, but they gave me three different colors and I'm wondering how they're gonna feel if I just use one. Because <laughs> I, I really can't wind three bobbins. Well, I, I just need this one here. And I think I have something really close. This looks so much better though. Maybe I'll just use this. Oh, I if I wind a bobbin for this, there won't be any left on the spool. How are you all? <laughs> Hi, Kara. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Shem. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Kathleen. Morning, Lindsay. Hi, Erin. Hey, Terry. Um, how are you guys? Are you guys busy? It's busy. Hey, Pam. Hello from a very stormy, very wet California. Paradise. Paradise, California, to be specific. <laughs> I just... I just, uh, I think that this could work. It's a little lighter. Hey, Monica. I just love this so much, but it's, I just don't think it's enough unless I switch and I only wind half a bobbin, you know? Oh, and this one never wound. Dang it. Come on, man. Hey, Danny. So I have a cream here um, and I'll use this. Nice, Terry. A nice hands-free um, video. <laughs> yeah, right, Nancy? Yeah, it does, Shem. <laughs> I have done that, Nancy. I've done that. And I, I don't know if these bobbins they don't seem like they're bigger than like my home sewing machine at all. I just, like I said the other day, I really think these spools have gotten smaller. They just don't hold that much. I love the way this looks. Let's, let's look at the pattern and just see about like, where do we think our stitching is gonna show? Oh, lots of places. Okay. <laughs> so right here, this is our olive green and this is our pocket. So what we could do is sew our pocket. I have this in order of how we're supposed to sew it. So we're supposed to sew this first. Oh, you never need to apologize for being late. You can come whenever you like. It's, oh, you bought the Quilters Advent calendar, calendar? That's nice. Nancy's got one, an Advent calendar as well. And hers is pretty cool too. I haven't seen yours though. I've heard of that one. I'll have to look it up. It seems like a fun thing to do. I know a lot of uh, the Vlogmas videos open advent calendar, so I guess I could watch one of those. 
Like one person I saw had three advent calendars. <laughs> There's no way the ad revenue for this month would pay for three advent calendars for me. <laughs> There's no way. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the outer bag. I'm just engaging my thread usage here in order, okay? Because I can wind a bobbin while I'm sewing um, for a different color, not the one I'm using currently, right? Okay, so first thing you do is you assemble the lining. That's what it is, you assemble the lining. That's cream thread, got that? I've got that, okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, the divider, however, uh, we made in the black fabric. So I could do that and then switch to cream. And then we do the outer pocket, which is also black. Okay. Okay. I actually think I can sew the lining. All right, let's just dive in. I, I hate overthinking some of this stuff, you know? It's like, I just like to sew. <laughs> so, let's see here. I'll wind this while I'm sewing everything in cream and black. That's my plan right now. However, I really want that cream bobbin to finish winding because I've been kind of cheating and stealing my, oh, I don't have, what? Oh, shoot. I should have another cream bobbin, but there was only a little on it. And this one didn't wind, like it slipped. Oh no, no, here it is. Okay, oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. Okay, that's my plan. Candy, out of the way. Okay, I ate one of these little spoons last night. I'm just gonna admit, I just ate the spoon. <laughs> I didn't even put it in ice cream. I had already had a bowl of ice cream. It's not as pepperminty as a candy cane. And it's not like, you know how like there's gum there where there's peppermint and there's sweet mint? I love both of those. I wouldn't even say it's like the sweet mint. It's more like a, just a low volume peppermint. So if you see these spoons and you're curious. So if I had eaten this with the ice cream, it wouldn't have been satisfying. The ice cream would have overpowered it. If you like, you like candy cane ice cream. So, hey Leah. Hey Terry, how's it going? Yeah, I just wanna sew. <laughs> All right. We need black. And I think that's it. I love, I love it when I can stage things and I get to put my bobbin on the top. I just, I love that. I love that they do this because I know a lot of people buy cones for sergers, but the bobbin just, it's meant for a bobbin right there. I love that. It took me a while to figure that out. I found it out by accident. because so I was like, where do I put this? And I was like, this looks like it'll sit right here. And it did. <laughs> You've gotten a charm pack, fabric for binding, Pattern for a mini quilt and mug rags, embroidery kit to make a key change. Jeez, a button jar. A jar for buttons or a jar full of buttons? I shouldn't have cut this thread. I'm just putting it right back on. Maybe I should do the divider first. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna do the divider first because then we can just continue with the cream for the whole lining. So we'll do that. Yeah, and then Nancy gets like like personalized things in her advent calendar too. Do you get personalized things too? Does is anyone doing the label one this year? The Kylie and the Machine label one? I saw one today and it looked really cute. I haven't seen all the labels in it. I still have some from last year's. I really thought I would go have gone through all those. Can't, I'm kind of shocked I didn't. <laughs> Hi, Eliza, how's it going? Tis the season, absolutely. Absolutely, all right. So we're gonna take this little divider and we are going to sew this. I think I really think I could have interfaced both of these, you know? Yes, I do, Shim. I use whatever thread I want 
in whatever color I want, unless it's a very specific project. <clears throat> Sometimes I, I don't, I typically I don't use my serger thread because, well, it's not that. Let me say, rephrase that. Most of my cones of thread are heavier than my, my, um, than my other cones of thread. I use whatever cone of thread I want on my serger. Some of them are heavier than others. This right here, this maxi lock is lightweight, not my favorite. I do not like lighter weight thread. I like the Tex um, 40 thread. This is Tex 27. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I just, that's what I prefer. But I will say, like, say I'm doing some nice top stitching. Um, no, not that, not even that. A lighter weight fabric. My heavy thread overpowers it. Hey, Louisa. A jar full of buttons. Oh, okay. Wait, why is a quilter getting a jar full of buttons, though? Like, I'm like, ooh, instantly intrigued. And I realize, wait, that's the one thing you got that's not very quilty. You use gray thread almost everything. Yeah, and we all learned that Elena uses rainbow variegated thread for everything, so that's genius. Oh, okay, 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 you got a pillow using some of the buttons from the jar. Okay, that makes sense. I finished reading your comment. <laughs> okay, I think we only sew the top edge of this and then turn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all the seam allowances are half inch for this. When I see like this much text for sewing a seam, turning and top stitching, I'm always like, what am I missing? <laughs> All right, we need to lengthen this and we'll lose this. There we go. Oof, probably should have. Uh... See, that's what happens if I don't sew something first. I get a lot of thread vomit. I knew this was gonna be on the inside, so I was like, eh, we'll use it. Still kind of bugs me, not gonna lie. All right, I could get up and, and press this, but well, let, let's do it. I just love using my iron so much right now. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's do it. All right. It's kind of interesting you do. See, I don't like like this lightweight thread. I don't know, it's not, not my favorite. An industrial machine doesn't need like industrial thread either, you know? It can take whatever, whatever the machine's calibrated for. That's all that matters really. Um, but when it comes to top stitching, something slightly heavier will look less wiggly, right? And it'll show up better. All right, so now we have this. That was actually the first step, but they assumed that I, I did this in uh, all one color. He's got a new shoe. Did your other one get like dirty? Should I, like I did put the shoe on it but I don't think I've done anything to get it dirty yet. Yeah, I love the iron. I want to iron. <laughs> I'm like, oh, um, iron this five yards that I just pre-washed? Yes, yes, please. Even though I have the dinkiest little ironing surface over there. <laughs> it's not convenient. Okay, I'm really gonna need this bobbin to finish winding so that I can switch it to the, um, the olive color. Yeah, and this right here, this is heavier. This is text this is text 40. New shoot for the iron. It's like a it's like a little um, cover for it so that if you iron something that gets goo on it or whatever, um, then you don't ruin your iron. Hey, Matilda. Oh, okay. Are you talking about the sole plate? Or the shoe? 
Your iron's falling on the ground? Oh my goodness. Okay. I say that like I've never done that before, but we know I have. <laughs> Why do I have these two pieces on top? I do not do these first. I, maybe I misunderstood that picture for being this outer. All right. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'm going to add, oh, let's hope this is hearts. Yeah. Because Hearts gave us this project. This is my last, well, it's not my last project for them this year. This is the last project they sent to me this year. <clears throat> and um, there's a little code for 10% off if you're ever shopping from there. Oh, okay, the shoe. Okay, okay. New <laughs> sneakers. Hi, Vistigia. <Vestigia. laughs> yeah, I'll have to be careful. I feel like it could just slip off that little silicone thing. Um... And uh, they provide this whole project. This is the noodle head divided basket that we're making today. Um, and so all the materials you see they gave us, this, this bee, bee print is pretty cool. Sorry, it's a little bright. The bees are pretty amazing. And then there's this citrus print and then that olive sea bright canvas. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that tubing. I know. That's why I've been ironing on the other side of my um, ironing table because of I'm right. Well, I'm right-handed. That tubing is pretty, pretty stout. It's foiled a couple of my uh, videos that all of you in the guild who have access to skill building sessions has probably noticed because I'm not quite at the right angle to show things. And I'm not realizing that, so I'm like trying to zoom in and stuff. So you know, live and learn. <laughs> Okay, so, um, okay, let, let me focus a little bit here. <laughs> I think we're gonna do our ends and our corner and then, um, and then sew these together. Yeah, it's so true, Leah. I totally agree. You know, and that's, I think, why, like, people ask me, not all the time, but kind of regularly about what, you know, sewing machine, I say, like what I, what I think someone should buy. And I, I literally have no clue. It's, it, it just really depends on what you like to sew and, and what your sewing style is like, right? And so, um, the only thing I say usually is if it's a first time sewer, buy them a used machine. And I say this because you can get a nicer machine that's used, right? And then you will hopefully, oh, those are wrinkles. Um, hopefully they'll have a better time of it not dealing with some of the idiosyncrasies of a really cheap machine, right? The only thing is like, you really don't need a lot of stuff on a machine. You just need a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch and a reverse. But they don't make basic machines like that. You might get lucky with some used or really old machines, right? So, but you know, a new sewer might be like, I want to make quilts. And then they're like, ooh, bag making is really fun. Well, that's, that's kind of a different machine, you know? So, um, do I iron, do I press these? Because we want to. <laughs> We're going to press. All right. I'm gonna turn this in right side out so I can get to it. And in essence, this iron was actually a gift from one of you guys without you knowing it because they gave me a donation and they wouldn't let me return it. <laughs> so I just put it towards this nice tool. There we go, there's one. Kind of excited to see how this comes together. I didn't end up cutting myself one because I really don't need to buy, to make myself anything right now. I have a lot of things that are gonna get sewn by the end of the year. And a couple of them are for paid how-to videos and um, I get to slash have to keep the sample. So I'm getting things I wasn't planning on already, you know? So, um, yeah. 
It's a lot of things sometimes. Woo, I dropped one. Yeah, I totally agree, Terry. I think the thing about saying, oh, buy a, a vintage machine for a new sewist is, I mean, obviously we'd all be kind of like, eh, depends on which one, right? And um, that can be a little bit, like, I don't know which vintage machine <laughs> to tell them to get. So that, I think that's the only thing. Oh, 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 I forgot to do this little thing here. The little box. Did I finish? Almost. We've almost finished. We've almost finished. Okay. We're, it's okay. We have something to sew with a different thread color before we get there. <clears throat> yeah, but if you don't have a serger, Shem, I mean, a beginner's not going to have a serger. And a zigzag is really essential for stretch stitches and a buttonhole. Is there a garment sewist? Hi, Aisha. How's it going? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, after we did our test on <clears throat> what the best stitch is for getting stretch for underwear, and we learned that, unfortunately, it's zigzag. <clears throat> hey, Monica. I already said hi to you. Yeah, I totally agree, Monica. Yeah, I feel like this one's really affordable too, you know, if you're, because my old iron was $80 and I bought it many times because I have one at home and I have one here. And um, when it, when one died, I bought it again because it lasted, I, you know, I use it a lot. It didn't die because it was, it, it shouldn't have, you know? So, oh, it's the same issue, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not the biggest fan of a serger. It feels like we weren't meant to have it. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it just feels that way to me. All right, so she probably did have a, a little marking here in this corner, right? Let's look. All right, let's take it out. This is it. Hmm. There needs to be a mark here. I mean, who cares about here? Yeah, that's what I said, Karen. Buttonholes, exactly. Yeah, me, um, Terry, the mod Terry, and Shem all have it. Hi, Marilyn. Uh, there could be someone else in the guild that said they have it. There are other ones I'm sure are great, Monica. I, I, I will tell you the thing I... The only thing I don't like about it, there's like three things actually I don't like about it, but they are they are not deal breakers for me. One, my hand sits really close to the heat of the um, the fitting of the the hose. I can show you when I'm over there. Two, my dial to adjust the temperature is ridiculously hard to turn, but I think Shem and Terry said theirs weren't, and so my hack for this was. I happened to have this little rubber sleeve. It's like a little tube and you're supposed to use it to change a sewing machine light bulb because you know how sewing machine light bulbs are really in these really tricky places to grab and you, and you can't put your fingers in there to actually turn. So it has, there's this little rubber sleeve you can get for $2 at the sewing machine store and you can put it onto the light bulb and then you can grab the light bulb and unscrew it. Well, this thing fit perfectly on that dial. So I solved that issue. Um, and then um, there were three things. The heat, oh, there's no labeling. Bye, Leah. Um, there's no labeling on the on off switch. So I doubt it every time, whether it's on or off because it doesn't light up unless it's heating. So those are my three things, that's it. All right, so this, this really needed a um, turning point for this little divider here. 
you know? And I know this doesn't go all the way to the top either. So I'm kind of surprised that, you know, like the, honestly, it's probably right here. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna assume that that's it right there. See like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Hey Beth, how's it going? Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just line this up. See this center seam right here that I sewed to there? I'm just going to line up the middle of my divider to that center seam there like that. This isn't an ideal way in my opinion. So why is it like this though? Do you just clip into this? This is such an interesting way to do this. As someone who used to make a bag with a divider, I troubleshooted, shot, troubleshot, this particular sewing conundrum a hundred times. Um, and the way we ended up getting around this because I used to make it really complicated like this. It was in a seam and everything. Um, and be, when it's in a seam, you think, oh, that's the cleanest way. Here's the problem with it being in a seam. The seam allowance sticks out from the lining in the interior of the bag, pushing it away from the bag. So that is one of the arguments against this way. The argument for, it looks really nice from the inside, right? Argument against, it's hard to sew. Uh, consistently because you don't want your your squareness to get off and wonky, right? So the way we got around this was we bound around the edge here and then we just top stitched it on either side. So the drawback for ours, it, things could pass under the divider, maybe, like depending on what you put in your basket, right? Your bag or whatever. But um, the benefit of this was it was ridiculously consistent. <laughs> it was so easy. So you have the Lara Star lift. Ooh. Oh yeah, the auto off, exactly. All right, I'm just gonna look this over. Yeah, they do have you do it. So she has you do it from the center. And then, um... okay. Okay, I wanna know how much from the top edge. There's not an amount, so this was raw edge of the line pin and can you sewing the top of the device? I would like to know that amount right there, please. Oh, well. We got this. Okay, so we're gonna start from the center. We're gonna mark the center of this divider here. Put it on the center of our bag. And I'm just gonna turn this inside out again so it's easy for me to sew because I don't have a free arm. And then we're gonna go for it. So when we get to this little uh, pivot point down here, meow, we need the sound effects. <laughs> right there. And then we're gonna clip up to that. And then we're gonna turn. Yeah, exactly. I've been re-ironing things. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I could do a better job of ironing that now. <laughs> All right, and so um, I'm probably gonna go against her directions for this side because I really want these to land at the same place. I'm gonna start this one from the top and go down. Wish me luck. Oh, my bobbin just finished. I just heard it. So we're gonna switch to the olive so that I can um, make sure I have olive thread by the time we get there. Cause I go this little tiny spool. Oh, you guys need to remind me to stop ironing or winding at a certain point so I don't use my whole spool. I was here for hours yesterday prepping things and I didn't even think about the thread for this. I had already prepped this stream um, like last week and um, I forgot about the thread. All 
All right. Don't pull too much. This is a little trickier to do. Snip. She says swivel, uh, what does she say? She says swivel right here. I thought that was really cute. <laughs> Swivel. <laughs> All right, cool. There's one. And now let's do the other one. Same drill. So how are you guys holding up during the holiday season? This, I have to admit, is probably the most festive I've ever been outwardly doing vlogmas and stuff. I've just kind of like gotten into the spirit and having fun. You know, candy makes everything just better, you know? All right. And um, this time I'm gonna go from here because we already have a guide. Oh, yeah, right, Monica, exactly. Hi, World Peas, how's it going? <laughs> You're doing okay with the holiday season? I'm glad. All right, this does not look, oh yeah, yeah, that's because we're on this side. There's a lot going on here, see all that? Just make sure it's all smooth away from the seam right here. Don't, I, I'm a puller, you guys know this, right? So I'm just trying to not pull right now. I'm gonna put my all where I want that needle to go and then I'm gonna clip up to it. I'm trusting myself right now. <laughs> um, where I want this to be, I want this to line up here so that's my non-negotiable. But so far all this fits really perfectly. It's a little slack right here but we'll be okay. We can ease that in. We really want our stitching to be just to the left of the original stitching because I use that contrast divider fabric we don't really want the stitching to show right here. And it does right here. See that little tiny section? So we'll just sew that part right there. And it is a little not straight, so user error, right? Okay, look at that. We have a divider. You love this part? Have you made this? Do you got any tips? Little stress, feeling time crunch. Got it, Kathleen. I totally understand that. Yeah, I have so many things to do that sometimes I just stand there. <laughs> it's all doable, it's all fine, but sometimes a little pressure is good for me. All right, so this is what we're looking at size-wise. Just see, to see it in perspective to me. Your shopping wrapping is done. You're such a show off all the time. <laughs> Ooh, it's always tough when there's like a birthday near a big holiday. That's, that's awesome. Low stress is a gift to everybody. <laughs> everybody that's around you, you know? Okay. So see how, what I mean by this is sticking straight out from the lining. Sorry, it's so bright. Let me just get you a little bit of. So this seam sticking out that's going to go, you know, against the bag. It's gonna push it away from the bag. And so like, this is sewn at the top here. You can maybe push this one side, but what happens when you push your divider seam to one side is it'll push your divider on the inside. See how it went, it bowed there. So, you know, you could pu push them opposite. I don't know, there's, I don't know what I would recommend. Besides you could clip this corner and then open the seam and press it. Yeah, exactly, Monica. Oh, we haven't tried it yet. Yeah, I know. We love utilitarian stuff, don't we? Especially dividers. <laughs> That's so funny, Nancy. You live somewhere where winter is like a very prominent aspect of where you live. <laughs> you know, so do you think, Nancy, I thought about this a few times, 
how in New Zealand and Australia, right now, you know, it's like, I don't know what kinds of decorations they have at their disposal, but I'm imagining there isn't, a, there isn't as many decorations featuring palm trees with Santa as there are sleighs with snow and stuff like that, right? And um, I was just thinking about the juxtaposition of seeing icicles on houses <laughs> where it, when it's summer there. <laughs> so maybe that's your, that's your hemisphere, Nancy, for celebrating Christmas and stuff. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do the pockets. <laughs> Let me focus here. So pretty sure we're just gonna sew this top edge here. I read this the other day, but I haven't read it lately, so. But we're already on page two. Okay. <laughs> you made the wrong man. <laughs> Posting final grades for the Mr. Day. Oh, what a relief. Oh, that's awesome, Eliza. You're on it. Yeah, I've been like making things since like June for gifts. And my backup plan is usually my mom and my sister who are probably the two I would make the most for. Their birthdays are in February. So I always feel like I can push one of their things to February, you know. Pretty excited about what I got my mom this year. I'm hoping she likes it. The thing I didn't make her. I'm gonna tone down the brightness here. It's just too bright and we're on the inside of this bag a lot. There you go. Have you guys ever heard of those lights for like boosting your, um, your morale basically? They're really popular where I used to live because uh, we lived somewhere where it was like, you know, 20 sunny days a year, you <laughs> know, something like that. I think it was actually 65 sunny days a year, something like that. 300 cloudy days. Oh, I bet, Nancy, that's, that's a huge, that's good too. <laughs> and you're the Californian, Shim. <laughs> So what I'm hearing is that if we ever do a so-so live retreat, we need to do it in the winter and we need to go to New Zealand or Australia. Let's just make it as expensive as possible. That's what I think. Because then we'll be kill killing a few um, snowballs with one snow stone. I did not want to say birds there. I don't know. I'm making up metaphors or not metaphors, the other things. But um, you know what I mean? We could boost morale. I don't know, just a thought. <laughs> we'll see if I ever do something like that. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, so let me show you. So see how my dial can you see it in there? You can see the numbers there. So this is the little sleeve I put over the dial so I can actually turn it. I just leave it all the way up. Um, here's the on off button. See, it's not marked. So when it's heating up, it's, it's um, glowing. And then my hand sits really close to this thing. And this thing is pretty darn warm. I don't think it would burn me. You know, I can touch it, but it's really hot. And then there's a button here. So it is, it is favoring a right-handed person. I will say that too. As a person who lives with a left-handed person, I think about those things sometimes. So. so those are my three things. This right here, you see this spring here and this little um, white shoe. This is the shoe that Shem and I were talking about. And so it is an extra piece. I won't touch it because it's bloody hot right now. And it's sitting over the sole plate of my iron so that my iron doesn't get dirty so like, you know, if you, if you are um, fusing interfacing or maybe you accidentally um, touch something um, synthetic that melts or something. So yeah, exactly, Pam. 
All right, that is almost there. So I'm just going to change the top thread, not the bobbin thread when I do this top stitching. And let's hope my tension, my tension on my old machine was just like chef's kiss. I could sew black on top, white on the bottom, and it would never show on either side. It was great. This one is okay. It doesn't help that I monkey around with the tension on this for top stitching threads a lot. <laughs> And I never really spend the time to get it perfectly back. Yeah, I think, yeah, exactly the solenoid. Exactly, Terry. Yeah, it's kind of warm. All right. We're just top stitching this pocket here. would love to do for paid work. Oh, I never checked. Ooh, okay. It's not showing. Look at that. White bobbin, black top thread. <laughs> oh yeah, Eliza. <laughs> but this thread, see how lightweight it is and look how wiggly the top stitching looks. Sometimes I wish I could make the emoji face that I really want to show up on my face because I know I'm one of those faces that's never making the expression that I think I'm making. Oops, sorry. Hi, Ray. Exactly. You need a she shed porch, a she porch. I don't know. It's such a weird expression to be honest. All right, um, I think we're gonna put these I think the reason I had these on top was that you're supposed to tack this down in the perimeter, the outer to the foam. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It finished. <sighs> Thanks, Kara. <laughs> I was too late, but that's okay. It, I think we'll be okay. Eee. I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Um, I'm going to, I kind of want to wind another um, cream bobbin. So I'm going to set that up. So you know what I just saw, Nancy, you might be interested in is, um, I saw this article, a, a popular mechanics article about these these, um, how do you put it? Like you could buy a kit to make a 200 square foot building in your yard right off Amazon, but they're gorgeous, like gorgeous, gorgeous. And one of them is a hot tub. <laughs> cause I, I sent the article to my husband cause I was like, you know, if I ever get to move my studio home, um, maybe I could do something like this, you know, or maybe we could, you know, it's just something I thought you'd just find it really cool. You know, he was like, at first thing he was like, did you see the hot tub one? I didn't even look at it, but he's really into that idea. Okay. So I'm just going to tack this on here. This was one of the first steps. I'm going to change my stitch length. Okay, Barbara, did I say hi to you? Oh, wow. So when I went to Iceland, it was summer, so I didn't get to see the northern lights. Is your friend kind of a nerd about those things? Is that why they went this time of year? Because you can literally ski around there. <laughs> so I, I feel like, I mean, I know the snow's probably better now, but I bet their photos are, are stunning. Like that is one thing I will say is, uh, Iceland is one of the most picturesque places I've ever been. It was incredible. All right. 
I don't usually do stuff like this, like tack it all, but I don't know this foam very well, so I'm just gonna give myself every chance of su succeeding. <laughs> Um, just a second. Hi. Hi. Uh, no, but he is in that down there. You can just sit on the counter. I can get to him. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I didn't put my sign on the door saying I'm live because nobody's here. <laughs> Someone got a package. Oh, okay. Uh oh. I wonder why that is. <laughs> Grandma emoji. Sounds like Eliza and Ray have a plan. All right, I'm just trying to make sure there's no slack in here. The foam is so different than the stiffener I use. It's so interesting. But look at that, no bubbles. So I'm fine, oh, sorry, I'm fine for that. All right, let's get our pocket here. I'm gonna line this up. And uh, don't skip this step. I, this is where you want to define the pockets. And I'm going to follow their lead here. Oh my goodness, they had to, oh wow. What an incredible thing. I would love to see them. I've been to Alaska, I've been to um, Iceland and I've never seen them. I think I saw like a hint of them in Alaska but it was too cloudy most of the time I was there. Okay, so you see how you want to stitch across right here? So the reason you wanna do this is because these particular pockets wrap around the whole bag, right? And if you don't do that, things will slip under the pocket. Personally, I would also do the sides here, but you know, we'll just, we'll just follow how it's written here. All right, so. I'm going to fold this up and just give myself a little guide for sewing this in a straight line. This is my cheaty way to do things like this. There's one. We added a second pocket to this bag because that's what Hearts requested. They felt like the bag worked a little better to have two pockets on it. So normally it would just be one um, and we are doing two. Hey Sydney, how's it going? I know, I'm, I'm uploading so much content that someone the other day was like, wait, um, where's number seven? Because it was a live stream, the Vlogmases. <laughs> I was like, it was a live stream. <laughs> so you're gonna see it in a different spot on my channel. All right. I love this combo. It's a little dark on the camera, but it looks really good in person. Oh, then they, and then she says to stitch all the way around. Oh, and then she also says, you can do more. I think that's a good idea, actually. Let's, um, I should have marked this before I um, sewed it. There's a pin here. We're gonna divide the divided basket. <laughs> Mark this before you sew, so it's a little easier. 
It is, isn't it, Monica? Oh my gosh. They're so good at picking out fabrics. I would definitely do a few back stitches right here because it's a high stress area. There we go. You don't have to go all the way down here. You can just go to here, but it's fine. Okay, let's just tack this in a few places. this side. We'll use this one. This is uh, from Hearts Fabric. I can tell you all about it. Let me tell you about it because they sent this project to me and then it goes back to them once I'm done and it'll sit in their store. So this right here is the Citrus Floral Canvas. It's item number 99738. If you probably search citrus floral canvas, you'll probably get this and a few other things. Uh, the lining is, with that gold lining with the bees all over it. The bees are amazing. This, the delicacy of this, I love this print. It's called Bees Knees 101778. And then this right here, this is their Seabright canvas. The item number is 102665. So if you wanted this, these, this combo of these things, or you wanted to know that this coordinates with this, and it, and it really does, um, they, that would work. These look like olives to me, but I know they're like the bloom's about to open. That's just because I have olive trees in my house. <laughs> um, they don't tell you the color name of this. That's why I gave you the um, item number. But I will say, someone asked me in last time on the live and in the comment section about the Seabright canvas and if it would be good for a boiler suit. Um, this is, I've always wanted to see this stuff. This, and, and I actually remember that this is what I bought and made my husband's uh, cargo shorts, the wardrobe by me cargo shorts. I used this and it was in like this Carhartt orange, orangish brown, you know what I mean? Um, and then um, I don't think it would be good for a boiler suit. I told them jet setter twill. They're jet setter twills, like a stretch twill. I just got some of that for a project I have to sew. And um, it's thinner, more drapey, still has the like body of a twill, you know, but it's also a little stretchy. Whereas this is a little, this is a nice canvas. I will say this is a nice canvas. It's a little lighter than the canvases I've used and it has a nicer finish on it. Like it looks, it looks nicer than what I used to use. Mine was a little bit more canvasy <laughs> you know so um yeah so anyway that's my that's my feedback on this these fabrics here if you're looking for a canvas i would think of this one as being great for bottoms or bags or things like that it's not really like boardy and stiff that much but it definitely isn't drapey. Yeah, right, Aisha? Exactly. You like how, oh, how fast my thread cutter is? Oh yeah, it's instantaneous. My heel does it. I go like that, like that with my heel. Okay. We got our outer bag. This is where we're at now, right? There's a lot of stuff on my screen right now. Let's move this guy over here, here. I'll just put it there. I could turn off the candy filter. Is that, is that a little nicer? That's a little nicer, huh? Let's do that. Um, then we have our lining with the divider. How are we liking the fabric choices that we went with? I think our choices were pretty good actually, like the way we configured, fig, configured it. And then so now we have our handles and we need to put the bag together. So let's see what's next. Completed exterior right side out. Turn completed exterior right side, wait a minute. I never sewed anything 
Oh, okay, okay. There's just not a, uh, well, I'm glad I saw this. We need to sew this together. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't even, there's not like a step that says sew together. It, there is a step that says it, but it's like, it's like in a succession of steps. All right, so we're just gonna put this right sides together. We need to change the red color now. Hey Marie, how's it going? Yeah, the bee is cute. Your is heel activated too. Oh, interesting. Is that a like a tabletop juki? I don't know the model numbers. I would have loved to have been a like a Juki ambassador, but then I was like, oof, they don't send you a bunch of machines, do they? I don't really want any more machines unless it's a dedicated buttonhole <laughs> machine. Ooh, that would be a good thing to ask Santa for. A dedicated buttonhole machine. I'm writing that down. I mean, if there was anything to ask Santa for, I got a, a direct message from someone requesting a uh, Santa letter. Oh, okay, okay. I ha I feel like my machine has a um, thread cutter on it, or maybe it's more like an automatic back tack, and it's it's really slow, so I don't use it either. You just set your cover stitch to a double chain stitch. I was running a ton of piece through. I didn't check. Oh, no. Well, it's a chain stitch at least. Oh, I should have checked that those pockets matched each other. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> For not checking. Let's make sure we get all these little threads to the seam allowance here. I'm going to backstitch right over those pockets, too. All right, and we're going to do the bottom. This is thick. Whoa, it's pushing against that. Went a little crooked. This is thick, but this is, I think, what's nice about the, the soft, this, this foam is that it doesn't feel um, as bulky because it's not stiff. Oh, well, you said you set it to do a double chain stitch. That's why I, I that's why I thought, I thought you meant like you wanted cover stitch, but you set it to double chain by accident. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, do we do these corners too? Repeat step one D that must be the corners. One D. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, we're gonna put our corners together. I'm gonna open up the seam allowances here. That's a little crooked. Make sure you ca caught all the layers. The last thing you wanna do is turn your bag all the way right side out or finish it and you're like, oh. <laughs> and catch my pocket like look at this is a good example because look at my pocket it's kind of sitting away from the edge there this is when you're happy there's half inch seams because you didn't use some you know piddly quarter inch seam nonsense that i would have put on the pattern <laughs> let's see it check it we got all of our layers, looks good. Okay, let's turn it right side out. It is not lazy, it's efficient. I feel added. <laughs> it's efficient. It's quality of life for a skill. <laughs> Kira's like, I know, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, 
This is looking cute. Very cute, very cute. All right. This is why we bind because we want a clean top edge, but no, nobody likes binding. So we're gonna have to do it the way they say. I think we're doing our handles next, let's see. Okay, we're gonna make our handles. I'm gonna show you both ways to do it. All right, so I'm gonna be making fabric handles um, but if you, in case you wanted to do the webbing style, this is how I would do it. So here's your fabric and then there's the webbing. Let's sew this. I think it's a half inch seam. Let's make sure, make sure I do it right. Let's see. Hmm. Be more like a quarter inch seam. I can usually just see it. Yeah, quarter inch. Oh, they ha oh, she has you do it. Oh, well, I'm gonna show you this way. This, the, I would do one of these sides by a quarter inch, like this, quarter inch seam. And then I would pull this around and I would turn this under a quarter inch on this side. And you can edge stitch the other side to give it the same look. Uh, the instructions have you pre-press both of these long edges a quarter inch under and then probably edge stitch them on. So you could try that way if that makes you more comfortable. I wasn't very careful, but you get the idea. <laughs> and that would be a fabric covered webbing handle, but we're gonna do it um, the other way. Cause I love doing it this way. And this is how Hart sent it to me. I, I didn't have enough interfacing, so I just did that. All right, so first we're gonna, this is how I do lots of things. Like tomorrow I have a free pattern coming out to make a tool belt. And if you wanted to make a fabric belt to go with the tool belt. This is how I would do it. And then we're going to iron it towards this fold in the center. It doesn't look, that doesn't look equal. And then fold it again. It's the optical illusion, I guess. Just like that. Nice, even thickness. That's what's great about this method. I think that this makes the nicest strap. All right. It's hot, hot, hot. Okay, we're gonna edge stitch this. You want those like edges perfectly lined up with one another. our two handles. Yeah, I hate turning tubes right side out too. <laughs> um, dang, I looked up what the spacing was but between here, like at the end here, and now I don't remember. I think it's two inches. Yeah, one inch on, e on each side. And so if you're doing the, the webbing handle, you would go like this, right? We're just going to tack our handle here and 
mash it down. Oof, that's getting thick. Let's just mark it. Especially when you have these really short handles. Mash it down a little bit there. And then let's do this one. I'm kind of dreading the next step. I can tell. <laughs> Can't we just bind it? <laughs> Binding is so much easier. <laughs> okay, there we go. I like all of our fabric choices, like where we put things. I think it, it looks good. All right. So, yeah, we have to turn this under like this. That is so thick. Okay, we can do it like that though. Okay, 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 that's okay. Oh, but let's let's fix this right here, this little seam allowance thing. I already can't, I have to deal with it like poking out along the seam there. I'm just gonna try and, you know, press all this in here a little bit. Okay. Now, do we pre-press this edge? You know me, I'm not a pre-presser. I feel like it limits me. But I do just really would like to, you know what, I'm gonna try and iron this. This is, this is my plan. It'll be an experiment. We'll sacrifice my, well, I'm sacrificing hearts. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I mean, exactly, Kara. Maybe they are, Nancy. Oops, here we go. I'm just gonna try and press this a little bit, get it a little flatter. I don't have a, a towel. I would put a towel in there, this salami, as I call it. So I clipped the corner up here just so I can open this up a little bit. Cause it'd be hard to top stitch this, right? Let's get this nice and flat. But you're right, like if we were binding this, we could have sewn this so that this seam here especially was all one with the um, outer. So then it wouldn't be a um, lining that's floating inside. It would sit a little more flush. And <clears throat> doing a divider, it does make it harder to be able to, um, I clipped this corner, but this one's not opening up to get it flush because the divider makes it an obstacle. If you've ever made my project bag pattern, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm really like, get in there. <laughs> All right, so then that'll be a little bit flatter to the bag. Why is this coming out right here? Did I just stop sewing right there? Oh, I did, I just stopped sewing right there. That's really funny. That's really funny. All right, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna pre-press this edge. Shock and horror. I need to like sew that seam over there though. I'm just going to turn this a half inch down. Okay. 
Noodlehead knows what she's doing, <laughs> so we'll just trust her. I've been thinking about like some of the jobs I'm getting for sewing home, home making the video for like for a pattern. I don't have very many jobs to do that. I have four right now though, and um, I'm thinking like one layer I would like to add is a service where it's like let me let me come up with your sewing instructions, <laughs> you know? Because I think people do things to try and make them simple or they don't know some of the options available. I don't know, maybe I'm not the right person for that. I feel like I do things a little harder sometimes that seem easier to me. You know how you just like your things that you like? So I could be wrong. Yeah, it's all Terry all the time on the Terry channel, Shem. There we go. Okay. Moment of truth. Oh man, a denim dress. That takes me back. Ooh, Margaret. Hmm. I honestly only have one label left. <laughs> it's right here. And it's used. I found it the other day in a bin. So I think I'm going to save it. I ordered some new ones. I'm really excited for them to arrive. I haven't gotten any, like, shipping notification for it yet, though. So it'll probably be a while. I ordered a lot because I have kind of a little surprise. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping they come soon, though. They had such a good deal. It's really the only thing I got for like Black Friday type stuff. <laughs> did I just do this the opposite way? Oh, I just did this wrong. Oh my goodness. It goes like this, you guys. <laughs> there we go. There's no, oh, there it is. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I could not see that seam. <laughs> I think my phone is, um, Oh, my husband said they, he lost power. That's interesting. We're on solar, so it's not going to make a big deal, but um, we have a generator too. But I could lose power up here. If I lose power, you guys, sorry. Okay, I need a notch here. So what we'll do, we'll fold the bag like this, seam to seam right here, and we'll... Give ourselves a little notch right there and one right here. If you buy this pattern like from a fabric store, you get a whole printed pattern. Um, and a lot of noodle heads patterns, you have to, for lack of a better term, you have to draft them yourself. Like you get all the measurements and you do it. So um, if you're not into the whole like, having to draft the pattern you just want to get going right away buy it from a fabric store and then you don't have to worry about that there's my hair clip <laughs> welcome back leah yep it's all coming together now all right i'm glad i turned that edge under i will admit it because the outer is a little bit, you know, thick. And this is really making it easy. All right, let's do this pin here. The lighting looks really blue on camera right now. It's so much warmer in person. You know, it's like an olive green. Oh, I bet, Shim. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Plackets are, are on, shirt, on shirts are, are so stable. They're, they're some of the most pleasurable buttonholes to do. There isn't a lot of uneven thicknesses butting up against your machine like on like a waistband <clears throat> or even cuffs, you know. 
When I do buttonholes on a shirt, I can often just sew one to the next without cutting in between. I like that. Yeah, I opted out of the the one on the collar stand for my shirt. I put it on my husband's, but. Okay. <laughs> I gotta loosen up. My shoulders are like, oh. <laughs> that handle straight up. Don't try and bend it. My nail ripped yesterday. So it's tragic. It's kind of sore. Yeah, the dang seam allowance bump. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I get like, you know, I've talked about being too too clever for your own good. I do that to myself all the time. I know better. <laughs> and um, one of them is waistbands. So sometimes a pattern is drafted so that the, the if you don't trim any of the seam allowance on the waistband, it will meet um, when the whole waistband is sewn and those, the seam allowance will meet up to itself like this. That is very nice. It creates a nice even waistband. <laughs> um, and it's a lot nicer when it ages over like, like the patina you get when you're like, you know, washing your jeans a lot. So, and it makes buttons and buttonholes a lot easier to sew, but no, I always have to be too clever sometimes and trim it down. <laughs> And then I'm like, great, now I have all these like hills and valleys. Oh, that's awesome. I have no vinyl right now. It was a real struggle to get vinyl for to make that notions case. It's the first time in 14 years I don't have a roll of vinyl. <laughs> but I really used up what I had to make all the chicken boots things. I didn't even have enough to make all the accordions I wanted to make, unfortunately, because I still have a few of those cut. So, but there's there's still a couple accordions on the site, so it's not like people are like, where are the accordions? <laughs> okay, whew. <laughs> exactly, Kira. Greg, welcome. I know his his uh, husband's shirt turned out so nice. He he made a plaid one for himself recently too. Shem did. It turned out amazing. Oh yeah, the bin bins. I have a bin bin um, video coming out. I'm sewing the bin bin as a pen a paper tray pencil tray pen tray. <laughs> On, um, I'm looking at a schedule. I think it's on the 14th is the day I sew that one. <laughs> All right, so here's the rub. I, I would enjoy sewing this from the inside because look at that, it will, you know, I can sew it from here. Do I take a chance and leave olive as my binding? Or do I just do olive on both sides? Do I do cream on top and olive on the bottom or, or olive and olive? <laughs> yeah, so Kira, the, um, I made that bin bin pattern and then eventually I turned one into a box with a lid. And when I was making the lid, I was like, ooh, there's an easier way to do this. And so I added a bonus and it's uh, to make it a lid or a tray, you know, so you can do like organizing. Cause I was making, I made my sister a box, a bin bin, a box. And then I put all these little divided trays in there so she could take it out if she wanted to 
use the stuff in there. So. Oh, that's funny, Eliza. I knew that name was familiar. And I, but I was like, okay. <laughs> all right, you guys, are we just gonna do olive and olive? Olive outer, olive inner. I don't want this little thread to show right here, but I don't wanna cut it too short because then it might pop out. Just tuck that in there. All right. I think I'm just gonna start right here at the handle, olive and olive. Keep this nice and straight. I can't really see where this lining is in relation to the outer fabric, so. Dang it, I just pulled that out. Meow. Can you please stay there? Are you, are you Kira? I, I, I love, it's absolutely my proudest pattern I've made because I made it so that you can make whatever size you want, you know? Um, but I do feel like there's gonna be a moment where someone's like, why didn't I just buy these for whatever it is at Target, you know? Because you wanted it to be in all the fabrics that you wanted and it's fun to do, that, that's why, but you know. <laughs> okay, let's try and get this right on the edge so it doesn't look like we edge stitched it shut so no one can open it and look, right? Really want to get this right on the edge. I see little threads poking out, so I'm going to use my awl to get those in there. Oh, these aren't really easy to take off, are they? Just making sure I do have all of in, right? Okay. All right. Take your time through here. This is gonna be the fustiest bit, doing it near the handles. Okay, now we're gonna get a nice long stretch. And we don't want the machine to push this top layer of lining, like slide it towards us. So um, I'm using the awl to kind of stabilize it right there so it doesn't shift toward me. Because that'll be a problem and your bag will be torqued, right? The inside of the bag will um, be at a different alignment to the outer and, and we don't want that to happen. My machine has a lot of pressure. In fact, I'm gonna put a little bit more on. So if you can adjust the pressure of your presser foot, I would put it uh, pretty strong right now and always stop needle down when you're doing something like this. My home machine has a stop needle down function. When I press the back of the press the foot pedal, yours might too if you don't know if you have that. It basically does a half stitch. That's what it's, or does a stitch if you press the back of the foot pedal. So it'll raise it up or raise it down depending on where it's at. All right, we're at the handles again. I'm, I mash in the bag. I do a lot of bag mashing when I sew things like this. I've learned that it's better to mash it now to get it sewn well. Don't, don't worry about hurting the bag. You can always steam any wrinkles, even vinyl. Um, you can warm up your ironing board and then lay your, your vinyl on top of it and that kind of irons it. The warmth up from the ironing board will. Okay, we're almost to the beginning. This thing went together really, really quickly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, there you go. I like that. And see, the other reason you don't want this to shift is if we were getting towards the end here and we had a lot of extra fabric, 
it's really hard to ease it all in in the last like four or five inches. So just try and um, let your machine know that you're not gonna accept that it, it shift at all. All right, so I'm gonna clip this thread. I'm gonna do another stitch all the way around. I'm just gonna trim this so I don't top stitch it in there. I can see I didn't catch this, there it is. All right, so do it again. This one will be a lot more enjoyable. Just gonna do a nice even stitch. Try not to get any wrinkles or torquing. See how the divider's like pulling away? So we just wanna anchor it down there. Is it noodle head that has the firewood carrier or is that thread theory? Oh, I just got, oh, come on. Look at that. The handle pushed my presser foot away. Womp womp. So we'll just pull this out right here. We're so close to being done. I gotta, hopefully I can manage it this time. How far am I from Santa Barbara? I'm about seven hours. Nothing is close in California. <laughs> Um, my sister lives near there. Her husband is stationed near there. Are you in California, Kira? I found the cutest little sticker for your car at the grocery store yesterday. Um, and it was Golden Poppies, which is California State Flower. And I was like, oh, so cute. There we go. Okay, where was that start stop? Here it is, right here. So let's get rid of that thread. That went together so quickly. I feel like I forgot something, you know? So see how this edge, see how I have this little lip right here? I was trying to prevent that. And when you're going on through these handle areas, it is really hard to tell because you, know, you only see it from this side, right? I wonder if there would be a way to just sew those two, you know, right sides together. Oh, in Tennessee, I think I remember that now. We visit California every year. Oh, nice. I like going to Carpinteria. It's exactly Shim. Cute. The loose, the loose lining bugs me a little bit, but it wouldn't be a big deal once it's like filled. And it really, like the camera isn't being flattering to it because it's actually really cute in person. It looks fine in person. Let's do the um, full screen too. Let me clip that thread right before I forget it. Can I even put, put this down? Here we go. Like this. This is cute. Very sturdy feeling. I think that, um, so the gal that gave me this project at Hearts has made a few and she said she uses this as a baby shower gift and she fills it with things. That'd be nice, a nice gift. Oh, it's noodle head, that's what I thought, you know. I was um, thinking about that and I went on the Thread Theory site and this was like last year and I couldn't find it. But it was just now that it just kind of popped in my head. I'm like, it's noodle head that has that. Thanks guys, yeah, this turned out cute. Hmm. 
Let me show you my project bag. I need to send one of these to uh, the Gallet Hearts. What's in here? Oh, my goodness, there's all kinds of stuff in here. There's a snail. <laughs> you never know, right? Oh my gosh, I've been looking for some of these. My very first clear wristlet, it's not clear. And this is just like a thing. This pin cushion, carrot. This pin cushion, my one of my very, well, this isn't one of my very first. A bunny that lost its tail. And what is this? Is this, oh, I think I looked for this everywhere. This is the um, closet core poof thing you put all the scraps in. Oh my goodness. Well, geez, well, this is what I wanna show you. See the divider in here? This divider is a little different, see? But it also, see how the bag, the lining is smooth to the sides. That's what I'm talking about, the difference. This is a lot more work though. This is a lot more work, see it's all bound. And this one has a built-in pocket right here too. So that's what I'm talking about as far as like, when you want to do, this is so much easier. Pumpkins out of the carrot fabric. What carrot fabric? What pumpkins? Carrot fabric? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen that? Um, what's the final measurements? Great question. Um, have you ever seen the, the knitters out there? There's this thing called amigurumi, which is more for crocheters. Crocheters have all the fun. They get to knit or crochet all the really cool little like things, like fun, fun stuff. Well, someone converted a bunch of, or created a bunch of patterns that were for, um, knitters in the same style. And this is from that book, Amigurumi Knits. You could make pumpkins out of the carrot fabric. I just still don't know what that means. I mean, it's a carrot pink cushion, but I bought this. I didn't make this. It's velvet. I like carrots, they're funny. Um, this is obviously coming undone. See, I got little wool moths around here for in my old studio, my two studios ago. It's a variegated yarn too. That's why there's a little bit of white there. But um, I've made the, a few things out of that book. They're really fun and fast. I've made a cat. Oh, that's funny, Danny, yeah. I write, exactly. I mean, I don't know. I think there's great things with both. Um, I've made the, what else did I make? Well, I made the Loch Ness Monster, which came out so cute. What else did I make out of there? Something else. Anyway, that just used to be on my studio. Okay, this measures. Do I have a tape measure over here? How come I don't have a tape measure over here? I feel like I did something with it recently. Do you guys remember the, the green one? I didn't cut it up, right? That's totally something I would do. Did I roll it up? Oh, I think I took it home. That's what it was. Okay. All right. So this is 11 inches from corner to corner right here. 11 by six inches. By eight. 11 six, eight, there you go. Let me see how big it is in relation to me. It's big. You could put patterns in here. Let me see, I have one pattern. <laughs> I have one pattern. Wait, I have two. 
I have two. I have two. Okay, here we go. This will give you some a pointer reference. See that? So the simplicity fits in there perfectly. Merchant and Mills 